Uh, hello, thank you for visiting this poster slash poster video. Um, so this is a, basically a, a little bit of an expansion on the talk I'm going to give um, Friday um, at 420 Universal Standard Time at the BOSC session. It, that one is only five minutes, so I don't really have time to go into depth. So if you want to get a more general um, talk about uh, Go figure, I suggest going there. So this one is really just very quickly going over the methods um, and showing some examples. So um i'm gonna assume here that you know what go figure does if if you don't know yet uh check out the uh, traditional poster uh, that accompanies this so go figure of course uh, this a clustering of gene ontology terms uh so how does this clustering work you use semantic similarity uh like a bunch of other methods that uh, use semantic similarity uh so let's say you have these three go terms and you want to check how similar are they can these three be represented um uh, using only one go term can they be clustered together uh, like go figure wants to do so we do this by using semantic similarity and semantic similarity is based on the information content of the go term and the information content is basically the fraction um of a go term in a database in this case, a gene ontology annotation database. So let's say that we have a Go term that has uh, uh, 500 proteins in a database have this Go term, uh, and the entire uh, amount of proteins in the database uh, or Go terms in a database is um, um, a million. So you divide 500 by a million, that's the fraction, uh, and you take the minus log, so that's the information content. So the higher, the better because the higher means the go term we're analyzing is very specific. It tells us, gives us a lot of information. Then the semantic similarity between two go terms is basically you take the information content of the uh, first parent term of the two terms. So let's say that we have regulation of cell communication and regulation of signal transaction. The first parent term would be either regulation of cellular process or cell communication. So we take the one that has the highest information content because that is the one that is the most uh, informative. So then semantic similarity is two times the information content of the first parent term divided by the information content of go term A plus go term B. Um, then you get a value from zero to one, um, where one of course is better, zero is not similar at all. And you could say, let's say for example, anything with a uh, semantic similarity of 0 0.5 or higher, we say it's similar, so cluster these two terms together in one cluster. So that's uh, what GoFigure does. Of course, these clusters need to be represented by uh, a term to so that we can visualize what this cluster contains. Um, it does this stepwise, similar to Revigo. Um, so it does this iteratively for all Go term pairs in a cluster. So first, uh, if one of the two Go terms that you're comparing is uh, very frequent in a database, so more than 5%, we take the other term. Um, if both are very frequent, you take one at random. Um, if that is not the case, um, you take the one that has a significantly lower p-value. If that is not the case, um, you take the one that is a parent term of another, if that, is, if, if that happens. So in our previous example, you saw that signal transaction uh, and uh, regulation of signal transaction and regulation of cell communication. Regulation of cell communication is a parent or regulation of signal transaction. So you take regulation of cell communication. And if none of those is the case, you take one at random. Although it's not true random because you want to uh, be able to replicate this. So it's kind of random. It's based on how Python orders list. You can also take a brute force one go term to be the representative of a cluster if you want to do that for biological reasons. Um, so then we have a bunch of clusters and for these clusters that contain um, similar go terms, you also wanna see the similarity between the clusters. So you take the representative terms of each cluster and you calculate semantic similarity between all these terms. Now, of course, you have many dimensions. Um, we wanna visualize it on a 2D plot. So we flatten it to two dimensions using multidimensional scaling from sklearn. So uh, basically, gives to uh, it gives a uh, two dimension abstract values that we can use to plot and you get something like this um i just realized i'm not in presentation mode but uh, who cares so so you get something like this um so you have the clusters show the circles 
um, and they are represented on two dimensions. So every cluster contains similar Go terms. Um, and uh, clusters that are close to each other are also similar in function, right? Because that's what the two dimensions represent. Um, and uh, this, so these are, this is done with the default settings. So in the, our case, uh, the default settings case, um, we have the p values, which are represented by the color. So it's the p value of the representative term of a cluster, uh, the log 10 p value actually. So uh, in this case, the, the most significant one, it's also sorted by p value. So the most significant one is uh, cluster one, which is protein transport. And cluster one is bigger than most other clusters is because the size of a cluster is defined by how many go terms are part of this cluster. So um, cluster one not only contains the most go terms together with cluster four, it's also the most significantly enriched. So protein transport, which is quite a general term. So you can imagine a lot of go terms are part of this um, cluster or enrichment. Now I'm very quickly going to show uh, the GitLab and uh, what you can find there. Okay, so here we are at uh, GitLab. And GitLab becomes the ebogen lab slash go figure. Um, so first thing I want to do before I go into what is what, I just want to show that we have a bunch of example plots here on the wiki at the bottom. Because um, there's quite a lot of settings you can use for a go figure. So again, this is default settings, but so this is all with the same data. So the default settings would be show, okay, you can change the cutoff for clustering go terms. So we want to say, they need to be more similar before we cluster them. So we get more clusters. Uh, you can set uh, sim different, you can brute force representative terms uh, using uh, this list, for example. Um, what's another thing? So you can do cosmetics. So the legend description size, uh, so you can see the, the descriptions can get quite large. So you can, you can say, okay, I want it shorter, I want it bigger, et cetera, et cetera. You can change the legend Columns, so you can use one, two, or three. Uh, you can add titles, et cetera, et cetera. So you can use any color palette that's part of Matplotlib, that's supported by Matplotlib. Um, you can change the color and the size. Uh, so in this case, I just swapped the p value and the um, amount of gotems that are uh, in a cluster. So now the amount of gotems that are in a cluster are represented by color and the p values are represented by size. Um, but for the input of go figure, uh, you can give either two columns, so that will be go term and p value. Um, you can also give a third column, which can be any value you want. So let's say that that you have some research and you have values that you want to to be displayed in these type of plots, which will then be in a third column. So let's say two, five, and ten. Um, so you can also decide to use this third column uh, as an input for either the color or the size. So let's say if you compare it with genomics analysis, you say, okay, this go term uh, is present in five species, this go term is present in two species, et cetera, et cetera. So you can use that um, for coloring or the size. Um, another thing I want to mention is that, so I pr personally prefer the clean look here uh, with the numbers and then in the legend. You can also plot the go term directly on here with the number and the legend. Uh, you can also plot these descriptions straight onto the clusters. If you would prefer that, uh, you, can, you can do that. Um, so yeah, just take a look at the example plots. Uh, here's some case studies uh, with um, mouse. Um, so let's quickly go back to go figure itself because apparently this was a video can't take too long either. Um, so you have a data folder, example data, which has the go stats input, which you can use directly. You can use top go input directly. Um, but like I said, you can do two columns or three columns. Uh, so standard, which is two columns, the standard plus, plus which is three columns. Um, so that's example input. You can take a look there. So we have scripts and we have data. Um, so the scripts here can be used to generate up-to-date data. So the data, so I need to move this. I see, but I will do that. Um, so you have an OBO file, which is the genetology uh, relations file and the genetology information file. And this go OBO file, you can set, use that together with a script to create a relations uh, tabular file or the relations full tabular file. The difference between these two is that this one is based on only SA and part of relations. And this one is also based on regulation 
uh, relations. So regulates of or is regulated by, et cetera, et cetera. By default, it uses only the SAM part of, but you can say, I wanna look at, uh, also look at the, the regulates uh, relation. All right, so you can, you can create these um, and you can create uh, IC. So they are, they are pre-computed, but you can compute them yourself. So the reason why we did this is because we personally got uh, very frustrated with web servers that don't have up-to-date data. So now you don't rely on me updating the data. You can update the data yourself. Oh, fuck. Sorry for the bad word. Um, so yeah, you have the readme. So we have the installation. It's not that difficult. Um, how to update the data with the latest data. And then we have the user guide with the inputs and uh, all the arguments. So the arguments are uh, required arguments, which is that the input and output folder. Um, how to handle the input files, how to display the legend, the visualization of the scatter plots, um, you can add a title, of course, um, and the output. Uh, out for arguments. So, for example, the DPI, the file types of PDF or PNG, um, folder, appendix, et cetera, et cetera. Everything is logged for GovFigure. So, that comes whenever you generate a figure. Uh, so, you can look back into that for the provenance if you want to go a little bit more in depth. Um, so, yeah, I don't have more time. So, if you want to talk to me, um, I will be present at the Thursday session if you want to talk more about GovFigure. Uh, thank you. <laughs>